Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer from the Technical Trader at the uh, techtrader.com. You can see my website right there. That's me. I've uh, been doing this for more years than I care to mention. But the website itself has been open since 2001, and it's considered one of the first trading rooms and trading day trading websites on the Internet. Um, we, we consider it one of the better ones as well, obviously. And um, I'm fairly highly ranked among all sites. Um, we have a <clears throat> free two-week 10-day trial, no credit card necessary. If you like what you see today, I urge you to come in, sign up for free, click, click on start a free trial, put your information in, and uh, no credit card necessary. <clears throat> and you'll find that you'll probably enjoy it, make a lot of money, maybe even pay for as much as a year, year of our service. So let, let, that being said, uh, let's get started today with... Um, I'm going to have to get shit. You're still seeing, what are you seeing now? Uh, there's nothing sharing right now. Okay, hold on a minute. You should see my charts now. Okay. Now it's loading. Okay, yeah, now I see your chart. Okay, great. So, um, folks, I'm, I'm here to analyze your trade, which means, obviously, that um, I would give you my technical take, my over 50 years of experience in technical analysis. I wrote a book called Profitable Day in Swing Trading, um, and I, I guide hundreds of people every day in my site in their in their day trade based on technical analysis one minute intraday chart patterns so with no further ado um i'm going to start with uh questions from the chat room looks to me like alex has a question about adus now an interesting stock i know this company it's thin and it's expensive now i do like one thing about this chart I'm a big believer in base patterns that can support a big move. This has been basing since 2021. You can see a three-year base pattern that broke out. Now, also, one other thing, if you look at a weekly chart, the long-term trend is impeccable. It's a beautiful 45-degree angle, that rising channel. I would estimate the possibility this stock could double or more over the next year or so, maybe two years. But the problem is right now, we got to get through the spike all-time high it's like 128 and a half or, or so. We're right there. It looks like, and I'm sure that um, Alex would, would agree with me, the stock just went to a nominal new all-time high today. So obviously, <clears throat> clear ceiling, no overhead resistance. And if you know um, who Jesse Livermore was, Jesse was one of the, he was a young guy, but li literally a 19-year-old guy, kid who, who used to trade stocks in the, in the 20s. And he would say, Trade high, buy high and sell higher, meaning once you buy a stock that's broken to the all-time high, there's blue skies, there's nobody looking to get out even or, or sell sell the stock unless you're obviously selling at a profit, which is a good thing. Now, with, on a short-term basis, Alex, this is your rising tops line. The way I've drawn it, we're near the top of that. So there's double resistance here. The stock could very well pull back, but if it blows through, my short-term targets are closer to 140 and at 165. AMCX is another story. Here's your daily chart. If you go back to a weekly, you'll see how, uh, how ugly this has been for now, a long time. So the stock literally came down from the 80s in early 21 to get down to under $10. What I normally will do it and immediately was draw, draw my trend channel. Connecting lows and highs, you get, a, you get a semblance of an idea of where the stock may may have gone and may be able to go to. Always draw lines across prior highs and lows to give you an idea of where resistance might be. In this case, this is a very negative chart, in my opinion, and I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole until I see over 11, 55, 60 across there. And even then, you have moving averages and gap resistance. So... The difference between AUS and AMCX is completely different. Now, one thing I am a big believer in is not to chase stocks down or up, meaning never try to pick a bottom. You can cut your hands. Uh, you know, they say dead cat bounces are a good idea. Look at the technicals. Lousy. There's no reason to buy the stock until I see a price volume surge above 11.57. And even then, you have the layers of resistance and targets around 13. 15 and a half, 19 long term. Once it gets above this declining tops line, you have a chance of a much bigger move. But right now, you're just guessing 
and it's not a not a good investment. Um, David, I'm not seeing any other symbols. Anybody out there have anything they want me to look at for you? Am I correct, David? You're not seeing any symbols either. Okay, well, oh, there we go. N NSIT. Yeah, just those. So uh, this one's a lot better. When you take a look at NSIT, the way I draw, the way I draw these lines, first of all, look at the long-term chart. Now look at the near-term angle of ascent. Angles are important. They tell a lot to me a lot about how fast the stock moves in, in space and time. Right now, at the very least, and by the way, you never draw a, a trend line off a spike low. I think I learned from Tom DeMarc. These stocks will rarely go at that angle for long. So it looks like a long-term Elliott wave, one, two, three. Um, it's in a pullback mode. On a short-term basis, this is where I put a stop, right there. You see this pullback low? Yeah, this is not a good chart. Let's go back to a daily. Um, anytime a stock breaks to the downside, downside on a pickup and volume, technicals fall apart. It bounces on lower volume. That's considered what we call a bear wedge. I would rather short this stock than go long. That's my opinion. Until it gets above that line. If it breaks through with volume, it targets it. 2067, and then maybe a retest at a 225, um, 230 zone. But other than that, right now, the indication is here when a stock thrusts to the downside on pickup and volume and then rallies on lower volume, it's almost nearly always two out of three times, three out of four times, a bear wedge, and I would avoid this stock. You got that? I'm trying to get you to avoid losing money. Now, if it breaks underneath 174, I would short the stock for a move down to 150, 55. Because I think the one, two, three at the very least could occur. Now we have um, GME, GameStop. Well, you know what? Um, obviously it was in play here and it was spiked there and pulled back and spiked again. This is a very, when I would, it's totally a meme stock, meaning that it's uh, being traded by a group of traders the, uh, from the internet that are like getting together and trying to manipulate a stock. This one, I'll tell you the good and bad. First of all, um, it's uh, the good part is it's the apex of a large wedge. A lot of times I'll see a pop, pull back, pop, and then it settles in, and gets into the apex and pops. What I want you to do on this one is wait for a price volume surge. If it does get above the recent highs of the last three days, above 22 and a quarter, I would say then the target might be 23 and a half and 25 and a half. And then, and then beyond that is where you really want to see volume pick up. Everything depends on volume for me. When a stock rallies on low volume like this did here, it's nothing to me. It's got to break the whole pattern before we can start to say it's got a chance of making a much bigger move on a longer term basis, intermediate term basis, the target's 31, 33. But that is, again, so many bullish charts out there, so many. Why try to guess whether a stock's going to break out or not? You're always better off waiting for the trend to begin and paying up on it, knowing that it's going, rather than wait for it and watch it drift lower and give you a death by a thousand cuts. Got a symbol here on JILL. This is a very similar pattern. Alex. This is how I draw, draw my channels. This is a choppy stock to say the least. There's your long-term chart. There's a triple top that was broken. So what I'm seeing now is a breakout of a big base, a pullback retest, another pullback retest. Easy stop right there. So if it gets below 31 and a quarter, 31, 31 and a quarter, that's your stop. What I don't like is when a stock goes under the moving average, the moving averages start to curl over, maybe even cross over, which they did right there. They do it with lack of volume. The technicals do not improve, and the stock, to me, is headed lower. You, you know, you didn't tell me whether you're long or short. Um, Alex, are you thinking of buying it long or short? If you want to buy it short, I want to sell it short. That is the um, 
the kind of pattern I would short with a stop over yesterday's high, above 36 and a half, I would stop. Um, if it rolls over, your target's at 32, and then down around 28. But on the long side, I would avoid this too until I see more energy to the upside and more of an established trend. Are there any listeners out there that want, want some uh, something else to take a look at? Because right now, David, I'm not seeing any symbols. So I'm going to show you a few things from my, um, until we get some more symbols, I'm going to show you some things from my, my site. That, um, hang on a sec. Some of my swing trades. You won't see this because it's on another page, but I'm going to get my swing trade list up and go over some swings for you. But before we do, Jamie's got a question about Dectronics. I like this stock without looking. I can tell you I like it. I've been following this stock for a year. It's thin, and for many, many years, it went nowhere except sideways to down for 15 years. Broke out there. This is a beautiful rising channel. Here's your daily chart. A long one, two, and a three. And the way this stock trades in waves, it looks like this just broke through a double top with a breakaway gap. Now it's pulled back to test. I like this, especially over 1565. Once you get across that, the target's going to be about 1920. And then the longer term pattern says 24. So 1920 and 24 are your targets. Um, you have to stop under here. No question about it. The whole trend will change if it goes below like 10 and three quarters, 1080. So that's a stop. And again, it's thin, it's very volatile. It only traded, well, it's trading more volume than it used to, but still 375,000, not a ton of volume. Okay, got some more questions on CAL. That's Calmaris, I believe. Calamara. Calaris, okay. Um, not a bad chart. I like the overall pattern. Because it based out for quite a while, formed like an inverse head and shoulders, left shoulder head, and a weak right shoulder. But a breakout, a retest, and then it's established a new rising channel. And this is what it looks like. Actually, the angle is like this now. I always look for parallel channels because stocks tend, just tend to do that. So. Um, after coming down in a one, two, three, four, five wave, L8 wave uh, retest of the trend line, it held it and broke back out right there. And retested and bounced again. My only problem is with this market, a lot of stocks collapsed and are doing this. And they're doing it on low volume. This is not a good sign for the market, in my opinion. But I will tell you this if this stock manages to take out 39, three quarters, 40, the target would be 43 and 47 and a half. Got that 43 and 47 and a half for CAL. It doesn't look bad, but I don't want you to, to um, be casual about this. This is important to note that it filled the gap that it had here. And today was a, a negative reversal day. Take a look at this engulfing bar, which means the high was higher than that bar. The low was lower than that bar. It engulfed the entire bar. So therefore, bearish rising wedge could be had here. I would be awfully careful on the long side. Make sure you're stopping this. Do not let this go below, say, 35. Okay. Disney has been on my short list for a while. Let's see what's going on now. Today was a good day for it. That's the wrong stock. There you go. And now you can see why it's on my short list. Folks, this is a definitive left shoulder complex, a head and a right shoulder, a weak one. But the neckline broke with a breakaway gap to the downside from the little wedge. This is where I recommended a short to my people at 106. Three months later, it's 85. It's at some key support here. It's actually below it slightly. I'm not going to be shocked if the market goes lower. This test's 80. But it's down at the bottom of the channel. In multiple waves, one, two, three, four, and five. And this is a one, two, three, four, five. So fifth of the fifth for me, 
it's, it could be a bottom in here, but you're anticipating. See, see these four day highs in here? 86 and a quarter, 86.38, 86.50. Until I see a spike above 86.50 with big volume, um, I would avoid this stock. And quite frankly, even though it's at the bottom of the channel, that would be a bear wedge and everything neutral. No, this doesn't look good either. There's no sense in trying to bottom pick anything until it's turned around with energy and showing you a new uptrend under play, in play. Like it did here, see that volume? Breakout, or here when it broke out? You, you had that part of the trend and that part of the trend profit from. Right now, this is a very negative chart. Pat wants to know about Risa. RISA. Is that the correct? Oh, NSA. Yeah, National Storage Affiliates Trust. It must be real estate. Yeah, it is. This is a nice chart long term. Here's what I'm seeing a low, a couple highs. That's your inverse head and shoulders, and that's your neckline. That was all created after a massive down, um, long term down channel. Broke out right there. And then we tested for a few months in this range. Notice it held 34 and a half, three quarters. Right through there. Formed a coil, broke out, and it's pulled back. What I would do is, I would be, if you're long, stay long with the stop under here. You just can't let this stock back under this pullback low and the gap support. So I would say stop under 39. And if it's going to be a, a fifth wave, one, two, three, four, if the market has a good period, this stock might very well trade up into the 50 range. My target is 49 and a half, 50. On this one, with a stop under 30. Um, I think I said 30, I meant 39, right, 39. And that's my take on that one. Now, Ed Creedle wants to know about ASMG. Hey, Ed. Uh, well, first of all, Intuitive Surgical is an amazing company. It really is. And it's a NASDAQ 100 um, component. Um, and because of the size of it, it should be included in the generals, but it's not. It doesn't trade as active. Like today, for example, 900,000. But it's a gorgeous chart. Long term, take a look at the rising channel top. And where, it, and where it projects. That's right, 500 and 30, give or take five points, is my take. And I will also keep a stop underneath 429. We don't want that triple bottom taken out because that'll take out the moving average. That's the 50, the red line. And then the, the, uh, the channel bottom as well. So yeah, this stop is under 430. The target is five. 5.30. Is there anyone else has a question for me? Don't be shy, folks. That's what I'm here for. Okay, I'm going to show you some really good-looking charts. This is my um, some of my current swing trades. I put one out today for IOVAS. I-O-V-A. Check this out. So we made a lot of money with IOVAS. When it broke out here quickly too, because it went from like 11 to 19 in a very in a week and a half. It came down in a, a major one, two, three, four, five way decline. I like this base, but more importantly, when a stock breaks through three moving averages with a gap and does it with big volume, I'm in. Some resistance just ahead, overhead at today's high. But with this base breakaway gap and punch through the highs, um, I'm not looking for a move. To 11 and a half, 13, 14 and a quarter. Those are my next targets. If you want to play it close to the best, here's your early chart. You'll stop under the pullback low of 935 in that area. That's my stop. It works or it doesn't. My favorite expression is a trade works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you make a move out of it. Don't sit around waiting for a comeback. Sometimes they never happen or they go lower and you lose your trading capital. Preservation of capital is the key. And now, Tom Garcia has my one of my favorite companies of all time, and I'll tell you why in a second. I, I grew up in a little town called Hillside, New Jersey. That's the town that Bristol Myers first started in. So a bunch of my high school 
buddies when they graduated went to work for BMY. I know them very well. But way before they merged with Secure Squib. Anyway, beautiful chart. And I was wondering for years, I wondered, as good a company this is, how could they take this in, in a year and a half from 82 to 40? It's just decimated in a beautiful declining channel. But when it broke out here, I told my traders this is a swing trade. It went right to the swing target of 50.51 and pulled back in a very orderly manner. Now it's moving again. And I like this one. Hold on to it. You can put a tight stop right there. That just filled the gap. If it gets below 46, it's not going to be good. So stop on the 46. The targets are 51 and then 55. And on a longer term basis, I have to go for 60, 70, and even back to the old I had 80, but that's going to take a while. There's a lot of technical damage done on this stock, but it is indeed trying to break out of a long-term downtrend. Anyone else with a question? Any stock? Okay. Well, I showed you IOVAS as one of my swing trades. Here's another. I just put this out today. SPRY. Long-term base, multiple tops, if you draw a line across these peaks, three, four, five of them, we broke out, exploded. And when we broke out, today I put a swing on it right there at about 12 and a quarter. I think it closed at 13.09 already. We're up almost a point. When I look at the daily chart, it's because in my mind, the angle of ascent tells me this is an eighteen, nineteen dollars stock. So might see a fifty percent swing. I like it. Now we have some more questions. I'll go to Yeti. Okay, another one of those charts that's just not going anywhere. Now, there's no reason to be in a stock that isn't moving. Now it doesn't mean you can't make a quick trade on it or something, but from a long term standpoint. This hasn't even gotten over the June high, let alone anything else. That high was 44 and a quarter, roughly. That's your resistance. The recent high, 44. So, yeah, if it gets about 44 and a quarter, then I would look for 48 and 53.4 as your targets. Until then, be really careful. Notice that it came down to the test of the moving averages. I would have to stop this under 39, 30, 40, under there. Because if it rolls down, it's probably going to retest lower levels. You got that, Ed? Okay, now this is for Paris Angelini. PYPL. PayPal, again, another example of a stock that after getting hammered, and I mean crushed from 300 into the 50s, it's built what looks like, what looks like a possible base pattern. But what if you're wrong? What if it just goes back and forth, back and forth, and goes lower? You, you have to wait. I never anticipate a base pattern. It looks constructive. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to have to take out 67 and a half, 68 with energy. Say this is broken out again. Above 68, probably. Then maybe you can go into the 70s and high, uh, mid 70s and maybe low 80s. But for now, it's a promising base, and that's all it is. Okay, Paris. Now, Pat, trade this, TDD. That was a nice snapback, wasn't it? From a double, triple bottom, and again. It certainly was support. And engulfing with that tail that it left was a beauty. Now up for five days in a row, six out of seven. Is it extended short term? Sure. The ideal scenario is when a stock pops like that, you want it to back and fill a little bit. So if you can consolidate here without too much deterioration, the next stop would be a test at a triple top of 103. And then I have this line here for a reason, about 110.11. If you go back, you'll see it puts probably meaningful right there. Better than that. So by, uh, we get it through 102. The target is 109 and 115. And then we'll see where it goes doesn't look bad. Apple, we, wonderful recovery, wasn't it? But same things here that I want to point out to everybody that's listening today. 
I'm not a bear. I'm not. I'm more of a bull than a bear, but I am. Uh, they don't call me boxer shorts for that. Uh, I, I really am good at identifying stocks that are negative and about to roll over. This is where the stock got smacked. And notice the rising wedge on lower volume. Technicals are just flat. The unbalanced volume line has moved up, and that's a good sign. So Apple would be, I would call it positive neutral, but it really needs to be over 225 and a half to get it going again. And if you start to see broken pattern here, let's go to a pattern. When this line breaks, and we're right on it, this could roll over hard. So you got to be careful. I, oh, yeah, obviously everybody likes Apple, but there'll be a time place for us to sell Apple and video and everything else. For now, this is a bad sign, the way it broke. And the rally back is a good one, but not a great one. So I'd be careful with that, too. Quite frankly, I'm stopping for sure on the 2067. Hopefully it doesn't get there. And, and there's another one, FTS. Better end, better. Um, a nice base was built. It broke out. It's retesting the July 20, 2023 high. 2023 high right there. So if if you get through that end, then maybe. But also be keep in mind, Stock goes up, 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 up. It's bound to get some hard pullback consolidation. And since it's at resistance, what I always do, I sell half my position at the key resistance level every time. And then set a stop. Where would you set the stop? Well, over the last four days, the low has been there. 42 and a half, perhaps. Something under, I would call it 41 and a half. Below that, out. Or you can, this is the way I always talk about how do you exit a stock and enter? You don't have to do it all at once, right? Let's just say that's your rising channel. Obviously, if it breaks the channel, the trend breaks. If it breaks lateral price support, moving averages, everything breaks. So it can stop half under 42, the rest under 41 and a quarter or so, and you're done with it. If it gets into that pocket and doesn't drop the second, then you still got half your position, and you can choose to re-enter the half or just go with the half and let it run. I do like this base and breakout, but it's extended. That's my problem. Any stock that's extended in an iffy market is always vulnerable to these kind of pullbacks. Notice this big run up. That's the kind of pullbacks the stock does get time to time. Be careful. Folks, don't be shy. Anybody else? You're welcome, Ed. Feel free to join us at thetechtrader.com for two weeks for free. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, anybody else have a question? And I meant, did we go over PayPal? I wasn't sure we did that. I think, I think we did. Yeah, that's the other one that has that big base pattern, but it's not going anywhere. Uh, well, well, I'll wait for some more symbols and show you a couple more charts. VRNA. I put a swing on it the day before yesterday in the 24 range. It's already at 27 today. And it's broken out of a big base pattern, working out of the multi year highs. The weekly chart shows that this is new all time high territory. That's the kind of stock you want to be in, folks. Stocks going in the blue skies, all-time high. But no matter how bad the market is, there's always stocks doing this. I'm going to leave you all with a blue plate. Not leave you now, but I'm going to talk about one other stock. This is a personal um, personal pick of mine. I've been accumulating this stock for a couple of years. Uh, they have finally come to the point where their products are being accepted and a lot of good things are happening. It's called Milestone. Scientific, they make a uh, epidural medical device and also dental lasers. Pretty cool company. But look at the base, the breakout, the pullback, falling wedge, the pop on a million shares, and then another pullback and a wedge about to break out again. I think this stock is triple, quadruple in the next six to nine months. Keep an eye on it. It's called Milestone Scientific MLSS. NVDA, NVIDIA. Well, that's a, that's a curious one. It really is. Everybody likes NVIDIA. Well, I know that Mark Chaikin doesn't. <laughs> Keeps advertising. Mark's a good guy, by the way. Um, so this stock, split adjusted, went from 12 to 140. That's right, 11 fold. Then it doubled to bottom, triple bottom, and broke down. Couldn't get back through. It really broke down. Now it's snapped back. Um, if the market blows to the upside, which it might, 
they build them most certainly can be 124 again and maybe 135 again. But I'd be careful with this too because it's a stock that's popular. Maybe maybe too crowded a trade is. Um, the breakout today was above the 21-day um, moving average, but below the 50 and below resistance. If it gets above 120 and change, that's where I think it could accelerate. If it doesn't, it rolls over. I would stop below yesterday's low, say under 106. I'm worried about a retest or a lower low. I'm not sure the play in the video is over yet. It may not be, but look at the run this is at. A thousand percent just since the last uh, year and a half. So um, in a one, two, three, four, five wave move. Is there another wave left? Maybe not. Maybe this is your chance to exit, short it, whatever, buy some puts. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying that if you do that, you can easily stop over 124 as it breaks back out. We'll see. A couple more symbols. Anybody have something else they want to take a look at? Okay. Um, we're going to move on to a couple, couple of the swing trades. PAYO. I love charts that have long bases and they break out. And they do it with volume. Look at the momentum. When it broke out that day, I put it out at six and a half. Uh, though two days later, it reached 720. Not a big deal yet. You can see their angle of ascent is steep. It's been up for six days in a row, including a gap. It's gone from you know, 40%. So do I think it has momentum enough to reach eight? That's my next target. My next swing target. Okay. Um, here's another one, APPS, the low price one. Apps. Now, this is one of my best trades I ever put on. About three dollars a share back in early 2020. No, it was actually early 19. So it went from three in, in 19 to two years later, 100 and change. 103, I think it was. It's rolled over it. A long downtrend. But look what just formed here in the last few months. A left shoulder ahead and a right shoulder with a breakaway gap, spike up on volume, the heaviest volume we've seen in the stock ever, that's breakaway volume. And now we're going to sway higher with an engulfing bullish bar today. And this stock looks like it's headed for four and a half, five and three quarters. And I think six and a half and eight may be doable over the next six to nine months. Don't forget, it stock's 103, a lot of room to run. Is there anybody else with a symbol? That will continue. Here's a little low price special, REFR, thin, but a beautiful chart. Long downtrend, breakout wedge, breakout coil, and another breakout with a little pullback. Something to watch over 235.40, to look over three and a half and four and a quarter, maybe five. Research Frontiers. H-U-M-A, Puma, took a dip and broke down and snapped back. So this one stopped, but it's on the trend line still. Really shouldn't have been. I stopped it because it was broken under there, but it's still on the trend line. And if it holds and goes, we can see $10 or $12 on that stock. I have a question here on AVGO. Broadcom. I never understood why they had that symbol. I think they merged or something. Um, Here's your long-term chart. The really long-term chart. And by the way, you see the lines up here? That means it's a, a split stock. I can only go by what I see. After the gap was filled here, it rolled over. I don't buy anything in this group until they start to show me they can break out. This spike high here, 161.33, you see? That's what I need to see. 161, at least for starters, with volume. It's right there at two negative technical resistance points. The climbing tops line and the 50-day moving average. 
which is flattened out, it could roll over. See the moving averages crossing over, it might be bullish, or it might be like most tech stocks right now, forming rising wedges. Not a bear, but these are frightening looking charts. Technicals have not improved. Notice the volume here on that run up versus here on this run up. Um, this stock could just as easily fail along with the other tech stocks, like NVIDIA and you name it. If they do, the SMH is going to get hammered. And the SOXS, which by the way is a ETF I follow short, the semiconductors, it's a triple bear semiconductor short. Something to watch if the market rolls over. But now you can see the SOXL has really taken off with a nice snapback. But what did it do? Same thing here, folks. This is a rising wedge off of an oversold condition into a declining tops line. If it doesn't go any further, all it did was fill that gap, reach the declining top sign, and if it breaks out, great. So the next day or two, the market's going to either explode and a lot of these tech stocks are going to run, or they're going to die on the vine right here and roll over and retest at the very least, if not worse. Where can this thing go? I can see why it bounced there. Yeah, probably heads a lot lower. This is um, dangerous. I have a question here on Qualcomm and GE. Two NASDAQ 100, well, Qualcomm's a major component. Same thing here, and this is even worse, I'll tell you why. If you note NVIDIA and some of the others had those rising wedges, this has done nothing more than create a bear flag. So if your choice is semiconductors, this is not the one I would go with. There's a head and shoulder top. Oh, yeah, this is my, my tech trader swing short list. The, when it broke down here and rallied back and started to fade, I put a swing short at 189, I believe, and it already dropped 150 and bounced. And today was a good day for it? Yeah. But on the overall picture, that's not a pretty chart. Now, it could continue up, get up there 175, or even as high as 182 and still be bearish because it hasn't broken anything. And it's in a downtrend. You see when it when a trend breaks, like in this case, especially with a head and shoulders top, perfect textbook pattern. It came down hard, so it needs to bounce. So yeah, I think the ultimate target of Qualcomm was 138.9 on a short. If you can get it off at 175.78, you take 40 points out of it on the short side. GE. What a long-term chart. Unbelievable. They couldn't give this away with cornflakes. <laughs> Same with Chrysler. I remember that one. And Intel. Nowhere for years. So, GE's got a great chart. Double bottom, breakout run. It's a long one, two, three, four. If we get a fifth wave. Oh, this is Paris again. Paris. Um, Well, we got to take out a, a, this level here, about 175. Once you do that, my target's going to be 215.25. Up there. 100% stop on the pullback low here. On the 150, you are gone. Do not stick around there with this stuff. But this kind of a move is vulnerable to a much deeper reach base. It's really turned into a good company, didn't it? Anybody else with a symbol? Let's go over a few more charts. Now, I just noticed this might be a short. It's a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. It broke down and it snapped right back to the moving average and neckline. So let's just see if it starts to roll over. If it does, I have a swing short potential on this one. You can see a 1, 2, and a 3, 4. So a fifth wave, target is 78. It's now 103. Data dog symbol for. RK. Um, you know, it's been in a trading range all year between um, well, between 110 and 135. This dipped below it and reversed. And I think they had a good report the other day, didn't they? This might have spiked here. But note where resistance is. This has got to get above 119.20 with energy or 
in face. I do like the V bottom. After a mini one, two, three, four, big fifth wave down, it reversed. It did a, a I'm almost at 50% fib retracement. Let's call it 5 0. And now the pullback left. The pullback is gentle, which it appears to be. This has a good chance of popping. The measure move on it. They're going to like this one. About 20 points. 19, 20 points from here gets you 129.30 as your next target. So uh, RK, 129.30 would be a training target. But I also always look at where overhead resistance is. That's at 125. So I'm going 129, 125, and 129.30. Any other questions, folks? Bank of America? No, no, VA is Boeing. Sorry. Um, Boeing has some great news today, but yet the stock looks like garbage. Now, the only good part about this, in my opinion, is that there's some key support right there from the April low at 159.60. The reason today's low, 162 and a half. So this between here and there, some pretty good support. But any crack of that, it's going to get slammed out. Again, it's another chart that's suspect. Why be in anything that's suspect until the trend changes? From here to there, and the bounce there, leaves this stock looking like this, folks. A massive down chart. Leaves this one vulnerable to a big drop if it cracks. You want to buy long on the premise that if it holds, it's going to go. Stop under 159. Resistance is now 180, give or take a point. And then 191 and 196. 180, 191, 196 are your targets potential. Hope you got that, Paris. Now, um, RK has another question on AFRM. Yeah, I used to love this chart here. I had, we were swinging long here. That was a great one. Um, not happy about the way it looks now. And why would you be? It's another stock in a downtrend. We're not trying to catch a falling knife. Like, any, like most other stocks, anything to do with the tech, there's a bear wedge. I don't like this. Not until it spikes with volume. If so, the next targets are 29 and a half, 32, and 35. 29 and a half, 32, 35. Are your targets ever works? If it doesn't, stop for me is on the 23 and three quarters. Keep a tight stop. Right there. Harris has a question on Meta. Meta is better than some of the others. It's really acted well of late. Facebook. I got a story to tell you about that, but it would take too long. Um, so, spike down, rally back. Did the same thing here, spiked up and down and back. This stock, I've never seen Facebook act like this. It is really volatile. Good part about today's action, it's come all the way back from four and a half 528, from 450 to 528. Right now, it's not that far from testing its all time high, which was reached on July the 8th at 542.81. That would be my target, about 542. If it gets through it, Paris, this is the best one of all the NASDAQ 100 generals, in my opinion. There's a couple others that are pretty good too. I like Microsoft, but that's, this has recovered better than most. It acts very well. Even Netflix has been surprisingly strong. See, but see, even this one snapped back to resistance right here. Anybody else with a question on anything? Okay. Um, one of my institutional clients is very high in this company, so I took a look at it. Big breakaway gap, and I'll pull back to support. Um, you know, if it holds in, starts to bounce, maybe. So I would need to get this one to go. It's called Frequency Electronics, long-term chart. It shows a big base that can support a huge move. My people think it's a $34 stock. A little low-price stock uh, you're going to like is 
Surigon Networks. This is not a small company. Either. They do like a hundred twenty million in revenue. Um, base pattern breakout, retest, and breakout, and we put a swing on it. It retested and bounced. My target is three and a half, four and three quarters, and five and a half. It's a low priced, little puppy, interesting base pattern. So, ABXL, I think, broke down. Let me check that. No. Okay. You can see a long term downtrend. You see, I don't put swings out or put trades on until stocks change trends. Why not wait for the trend to change instead of anticipating and getting hammered? That's a nice, orderly, long term four year down channel, right? Mid channel line broke out. And the stock has formed a wedge in here. Keep an eye on this one because if it pops, you're going to look at nine and a half, 10, 12, or more. Early at six and changes could double. That's a tech trader swing out of X Life Sciences Biotech. Folks, we have some more time. So if you have any questions, just throw the symbols out there. Let me take a look for you. And some more stocks to take a look at. On the short side, JBL, one that massive head and shoulders. We went short up in here about 118. It dropped down to below 100 and snapped back like many other stocks did. But it remains in the downtrend. This is still a tech trader swing short, targeting 88 and 75. Another short, SIG, broke down from the bear coil, a bear wedge in here, we put a swing short on it. At 89, it's dropped down to 72.3, and if it bounces, um, it might be another short into the 67 range. So we do longs and short swings, doesn't matter. If, if we can make money, we will. Question from Arkan Pelletier, uh, and I'll get to you the second Paris. Pelletier, great chart. And look at this, almost what we call an island reversal. The long tail. Breakaway gap. Bring through resistance. Boy, is that a good looking chart. What's the problem? It's an overbought chart turn. Love to see some pullback consolidation and a setup for 34. But my target is 35. Look at and look, the last three days it's held 29, so I'd love to see it flag in here, not breaking down too far. The next support beneath that is 27 and a half, three quarters, and I would stop below that. Don't give me that too much leeway. MNDY, we tripped that, was it today or yesterday? Yesterday. Here's a nice one. Uh, now, sometimes I'll form that pattern and then accelerate out of it and break away gap. I believe that was earnings related. It's, it's extended and overbought short term. Okay, um, RK uh, has a chance of being 280, 81 short term. That's my target. On Micron, a question from Paris again. Same thing here at Micron. Any, all the tech stocks, particularly semiconductors, look like this. These are not bottoming patterns, they're bear wedges. I don't like what I see. Now, sometimes, one out of three times, two out of three times, this will go low. One out of three times it'll turn around. It gets over 107, the trend may have changed. Confirmation is over 112. Then you're free to go 123, 135, etc. Doesn't look bad at all. A few more to take a look at on my on my swing trades. BCRX. Here's a long downtrend. By the way, we made a lot of money in the breakout here on the upper. But on a downtrend, V bottom with a pop in a platform or some sort of coil. That would be right there. See it? it popped out and wedged and then popped again. And it came down hard to moving average and trend line, but held it and bounced. So I'd like to look at this one for an extension to test the $9 range. That's my target, $9.90.
We went long Uber. When it reversed, look at this island. Gap down two days later, gap up. It's a two-day island. Very powerful. And look what happens with that reversal. It really took off. Literally from 55, 71 in a week and a half. Now it's that resistance. But then he set up consolidation of flag would be good for a move to say high 70s, low 80s. We have a question here on FSS. Federal signal. Yeah, I know this company well too. Another example for breakdown wedge. These are troublesome part patterns. Call it a wedge, call it a flag, call it whatever you want. But if it looks like a duck and acts like a duck, it is a duck. Anyway, we broke down here and we snap back. If it breaks out, great. But if it all starts to roll over, you can get hammered down to 82. Very careful with FSS as well. Now, if it breaks out over 95 with energy, maybe you can get back to 101, 102. But and overall, it's a gorgeous chart. I remember the stock. Yeah. I think they make railroad equipment, don't they? Yeah. But anyway, that's that. We have a few more minutes left, folks, if anyone has a question. If not, we'll call it good for today, I guess, David. That's what I wanted to cover. If there's any more questions, quickly, folks, throw out a couple more symbols that we're going to call it good for today. There it is, Cirrus logic. Another semiconductor. Well, guess what? This one acted way better than a lot of the others. The others just did this little wedgie. This one convinced me. And what I mean by that is it broke the decline top slide, breakaway gap above the moving averages now. And the test would be 142.83. If Cirrus gets through that, it's all time high territory. How about that for recovery? I can see the stock making a move into 150s, even 160s. That's a good one, Jamie. And the power size of AMT, bit of American Tower. Yeah. A power size better because. This down channel broke. It's right at resistance. And it may back off, but should it get through here? My target would be 280 and 295. Once you get through that, it's Katie bar the door. That's a good looking base. I like the V bottom or the right hand extension. It's broken out. Volume is okay. Technicals are okay, not great. Let's get this one back up to 36 and get a run. Again, this may very well make a move back up towards 275.80. That's my next target. It looks like that might be it, folks. David, appreciate you having me here. Oh, we got one more simple AMD. Yeah, AMD I like too, but not the near term chart. Well, I mean, it depends on what it does going forward from here. See this low way back in May? Came down through it and back up to it. That's resistance. You punch through, and these target is 153.54, and then 170. So 153.54 and maybe 169.70 are targets if it's going to do anything. I'm not thrilled with the technicals or the volume on it. And that goes for a lot of semiconductor stocks. Something is wrong with that group. I'm not sure um, if, it, if it's been so extended that the bounce back is going to be. Look, I'll tell you right now, if the leading group in Wall Street can't do better than that, then we have a problem. Costco. Nobody can argue this is one of the finer companies in the world, if not charts. Long coil finally broke out at the end of last year at around 575 and went up to almost 900. It pulled back in what looked like a falling wedge. It held the trend line or near it right there. If that's a long one, two, three, four, the fifth wave target is nine. 
935. You got that Paris 935 on a longer term target. Um, I don't want to see it roll over under 80 quarter for starters though. We have just three, four minutes to go. If anyone has a final question before I go. Folks, in closing, I want to say, um, come join us at the thetechtrader.com. Sign in for two weeks for free, no credit card. I think you'll enjoy what you see. Hopefully make some money too. That's it for today's presentation. Thank you very much. And, and David, David just put up the link. You can click on it.